glad we're talking about the pressure parents are feeling about, you know, the educational demands that uh, are being brought to the forefront right now, because I'm hearing from so many parents like, this is really hard. I think that, you know, you're, you're being asked to add a whole layer of other stuff onto your life at a time when you're already having tons of layers. And so parents are worried a lot about looking at curriculum documents and doing all these highly enriching activities. And I would just say, let's hit the pause button on all that. Let's focus on what matters most in this moment. And I think it's those moments of connection and reassurance, strengthening the bond between you and your child, and recognizing that so much important life learning is going to happen naturally in this moment as kids learn a few new coping skills. And more importantly of all, they learn that we can turn to other people in times of struggle and our parents can really be for, there for us at times when we're feeling terribly uncertain. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more that the emphasis for uh, for parents needs to not be on teachers. And in fact, I'd, I'd really like to change the dialogue to stop uh, parents feeling that pressure to be teachers because they're not. Uh, it takes a lot of training to be a teacher. Uh, and I think that we should be asking parents to be supporters of learning at home. So supporters of learning at home opens that huge oh, the doorway to, uh, first of all, for our youngest ones, you know, for our, our kids in kindergarten, screw any curricular things you're being asked to do. They, what the little ones need is read like crazy to them. Play, absolutely play. Follow their interests. Turn off the screens, but follow their interests. Get the pots and pans out. Who cares if your kitchen is messy? They're going to remember what you've said, and that's how you made them feel. And you know, for for middle school kids, there's a lovely letter that I read on uh, on Twitter from a principal who says. Don't worry, we will find out where they are when they come back to school and we'll figure, that's our job, to figure out how to catch them uh, where they are and lead them to where they can go. And it was such a powerful, powerful message. What our kids are going to remember is how we made them feel. And you know, the grand irony for me as a child psychiatrist is I've often said that if I were queen for a day, I would ban homework. Because it's such an terrible source of conflict for families, and there's no evidence it is actually effective. For high school kids, I think they've got a different level of worry. First of all, I don't think our teachers are, are getting enough kudos for the work that they're doing for reaching out and connecting with kids. But I think as parents of high school kids, we need again to be thinking about how can we support their learning at home. Don't try and teach them this stuff is too complicated, but support their exploring what are what, what what can I do to make a difference in the world? How can I engage the world to change the world? How can I develop my competencies of collaboration? Is there a project that I might be able to do? So, you know, it's a, it's a lot to think about, but the key message I think really is don't try and be a teacher. Be a mum, be a dad, be a partner, and support the kids in their learning journey. Can I you tell I feel so a bit much. strongly about it? <laughs> There's a little passion coming through, Jean, just a little <laughs> bit. Um, and that makes me think of it. I mean, like when you are the parent of a very young child, like a baby or a toddler, you don't second guess yourself in this arena. You feel like, you know, you do have what it, teach, it takes to teach that toddler or help that toddler to figure out that, you know, the, the square brick does not go in the round hole and vice versa. You just watch them. And when they're struggling, you maybe point at this hole or something. You do something little and subtle to, to help guide that learning. We're just saying, yay, mums and dads, you know, you're the, you're the behind the scenes cheerleaders who can help this learning to happen, who can offer the support and encouragement, maybe help find, you know, a little flat surface in the house now that chaos has erupted in all our lives where, you know, a notebook can fit on a table, but don't feel the pressure to have mastered pedagogical methods. What? Yeah. No. 
Just no, get. not and get outside. And hopefully one of my secret dreams is that we see play coming back and being valued and that the poor kids who are under test pressure get that pressure completely relieved and they play, they connect. They do things that are exciting to them and uh, and turn them on to the possibility of learning. That's my that's my secret dream. It's not so secret anymore. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to watching you that list of dreams for the world and hopes and dreams for the world really like, you know, blossom over time, Jean. And maybe by the time we're done having these conversations, we'll have like a master plan. The master plan yeah. we've been wanting all along. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful.